Next. And this, we're seeing the inside of that with the sunshades. Next. And here we have a situation where we have a trellis where we have operable um, fins. So what this does is during the summer, we can have the fins be rotated to go horizontal. So basically it becomes a blackout surface when we don't want the sun. But in the winter, the fins can be vertical, allowing the sun to still come through when we want the sun. So that's a really great approach too, is having that operable, operability of the fins. Next. Here we're seeing the top of that. Uh, this is during the winter when we want the sun to come in. Next. We also uh, can do that with sliding louvers. So here we're standing inside of a room. Here we're looking at back at the house in the upper level. We have this sliding louvered panel. Next. And here we're inside of that where we can see even a sliding one coming across the window looking down at the horizontal louvers. And again, those high windows that I love. But other buildings, you can do it in many ways, screening the sun, allowing some filtered sun. Here, there's a green screen where they're actually having the trees or having vines grow up, still allowing some light to come through, but it's filtered. Next. And this is one of my favorite buildings. It's here in California. It's um, in the vineyards. This is done by Herzog and Demeron. And what they did to screen the sun is they just used stones. Next. Where they have a stone facade right in front of glass. So it looks almost like it's solid, but they don't have mortar between the stones. They're just in between these two layers of mesh. Next. So what this does is, from the inside, which you can start to see on the left-hand side, is when you're inside, there are gaps between the stones so the light comes through. From the outside, it looks so solid. From the inside, you have nice filtered light. Next. So it gives you some natural lighting, but again, it avoids too much light and too much heat. So it's a really lovely effect. Next. And it also, um, Okay, sun is power. Great. So, Michelle, sorry. Before we move on to the yes. last part of the presentation, um, I think the students have a couple of questions to ask you. Um, so, would you mind if we just interrupted this presentation just a bit, just to sure. get them caught up on any questions that they might have? Okay, sure, so that's great. Students at West Mount Charter. I know you guys are so excited to help build a school for your friends in Ecuador. And I think Michelle has given us such an intimate glimpse of some of her work and how she um, really captures using natural light in such a smart way to build a lot of her home designs. And I know you want to think about that as you build your school in Ecuador. So please, questions from Ms. Kaufman. Go ahead. That was actually Hello? Is that better? Yeah. Good? All right. Okay. Hi. So uh, my name is Lucas. I was one of the students that was actually able to go to Ecuador and take a look at these two schools. Um, one of the primary concerns that we have here is in order for us to keep the school sustainable, we're going to be using local resources, which primarily are brick and concrete. So while lighting is important, we also need to keep the rooms cool because both schools have been like given us concerns for computers. My question to you is, how can we make room for the sun, like giving good lighting, while also keeping the temperature very cool? Because both areas have uh, high temperatures all year round, around 30 degrees. So how could you possibly right. work around that? So I think the examples that we looked at um, the trome wall, I think this is a great example where you can use the stone, use the local materials to help absorb the heat, but have some, some light that comes in. The example that I showed of the winery, I think, is also a really good one, where they use the stones to absorb the heat. There's still some filtered soft light coming in, but you don't have all of that heat gain. So I think thinking about 
how you can use the stone to absorb the heat, release it when you want, capture it, but have some filtered light that comes through it. I think that's a really good way to imagine it. And then also, again, washing surfaces with light. So uh, it could be also that you have really high windows, that you have an overhang, so you have some natural light that comes in, some ventilation, but not direct hot sunlight. Great, great question, Lucas. Why don't we take one more question before we wrap up the presentation and then open up the forum for um, discussion for the rest of the, our time together. So let's get one more question from West Mount Charter. Okay. Uh, so basically, in Ecuador, you have a lot of um, you have a lot of bugs, you have a lot of dust, you have a lot of moisture, and we're building a computer lab. So it's going to be very there's going to be a lot of heat coming off the computers and getting into the rooms. So we need to keep it well ventilated and avoid getting too much moisture and uh, bugs and all kinds of stuff like that. So we were wondering if you had any ideas of how we could design the computer lab to be well ventilated and be kind of cool and well let well not getting bugs and dust into our computers and having being screwed up by that. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's so good to think about those things because, yeah, this is why there's no one right approach that is universal, that um, understanding the basic principles of breezes of sun in different ways and then applying it to specific areas is so critical. So it's great that you're thinking about details like that. And I would imagine that um, having filters and vents uh, along any operable areas will be really critical. So not only bug screens, but even finer filters than that. So you're filtering the air, allowing the temperature of the air to go through, but not allowing the dirt and the bugs. So um, yeah, it's, it's a really important thing to be thinking about. Great. So let's finish off the presentation, and then we'll be open for discussion. So please feel free to prompt me, Michelle. Okay, great. Yeah, so sun as power. Um, next. This is uh, a lot of times what people think about, um, which is solar. And I hear this a lot when people think, oh, okay, I want a green home or I want a green building. That means solar. Well, yes, it can mean, and that's terrific. Um, but as we talked about, there are many other ways of thinking about the sun in addition to this. Um, that being said, it is pretty darn exciting to design homes, design buildings that can, can be completely powered by the sun. And using solar panels that can either create electricity, photovoltaic solars, um, or heat hot water, solar hot water, hot, uh, solar thermal, that um, that's a pretty exciting thing too. So we actually make all of our homes solar ready. We probably do solar panels on about half of our homes, and we either do it in um, like what we're seeing here is panels that clip onto standing metal seam roofs. Uh, we also do the roll-on type, which I'll show in a moment also. Next. And so the solar panels that you're seeing on this house is a four and a half kilowatt system, and that actually provides twice as much power as this house needs. Um, it was oversized uh, just to provide flexibility, but what happens is Every day, the house is creating twice as much energy as it's using, so it's putting it back into the grid for other people to use. And it's not a huge size that we're seeing here on the roof. This is the type that just clips onto the standing metal seam roof. Next. <laughs> 